this episode, we'll look at single table inheritance. So we have a user model, and I'll just fill this out with some general info. And then when we get to the show page, you'll see that we have emergency contacts and friend contacts. And while the data structure of these two models are exactly the same, we have some differences in how they act. For example, a emergency contact must have a phone number, whereas a friend contact must have a birthday. So this could be one example where we want to use a single table inheritance. And that is basically having one table or schema where the data will be shared between two separate models. And the two models can act differently. So for example, when we go to create an emergency contact, and when we create the emergency, you'll see that the first name, last name, and phone number are required. So I'll fill out this information, and then I can create the emergency. However, when we go to create a friend, if we just create the friend, you'll see that the birthday cannot be blank. So even though this is sharing the same model, you can see how we can have validations depending on what type it is, whether it's an emergency or a friend. So the first thing I'll do is create a contact model. And I could do that with Rails generate model contact, and then I'll create a user ID and I'll make this an integer. I'll then pass in the type, and this is going to be a string. However, the type is going to be what triggers the single table inheritance within Rails. And then I have some other fields, first name, last name, phone number, the address, city, state, zip, and the birthday. And notice when I create the migration, I come into here and I add an index on the contacts and I create it on the type and the user ID. So with this index, I can find all of the types or I can find a type along with the user ID. So then within our contact model, we can create a scope, and the scope would look something like this, where we scope our friends, and then we just find where the type equals friend. So then we could do something like contact.friends, and this would return all the records where the type equals friend. We can also do something similar for the emergencies. So we can scope the emergencies where the type equals emergency. We can then create another model, and this model I'm just going to call emergency.rb, and it's not going to need any migrations. And then we'll create our class, and notice that we're going to inherit from contact, and the contact is our contact model. So even though our model is inheriting from the application record, and we're calling this contact, we're going to create a subclass of contact called emergency. And then within the emergency, we can put in our own validations that are specific to the emergency. So for example, we can say that the emergency, it belongs to a user. Then we can also put in our validations for the first name, last name, and the phone number. We can then create another model and we'll just call this other model friend. And similar to the emergency model, we have our friend inheriting from the contact. And then we also set it to belongs to the user. We set the validations for the first name, last name, and the birthday this time. So then in our user model, we can create a has many emergencies, and then we would pass in the class name emergency. We can then also create a has many friends with the class name of friend. And then within our routes, we can take our resources user, and then we can create this into a block where we can then create our resources for the emergencies. And when we do this, we'll set our controller to the contacts, and we would explicitly say the type is emergency. And then we can do the same thing for our friends. So then when we get to our view, we have a heading tag for our emergencies, and then a blank table, and then also one for our friends with another blank table. So first we'll create our link, and the link is going to be the link to new, and then we'll just call a new user emergency path, and then we'll pass in the user, and this user will get mapped to the user ID parameter. We can then do the same thing for the friends contact, and this is just going to be new user friend path, and again we pass in our user. And so for the body, we can then create a loop for the user.emergencies.each, and then we'll just pass through contact. And then within here, we can create a row that will be used for each record. So here, it's just a standard contact.first name, last name, phone number, and birthday. And then we also have our link to the delete, where we can then just pass in an array. We'll pass in the user, and then contact, and then with the method delete. And then we can do something similar for our friends, where it would just be at user.friends.each. And you could extract this out to a partial just to avoid the duplication of the code. 
And within the form, if you created this from a scaffold generator, the only thing that you would have to change is the model. And instead of having just contact, because we have nested resources, you would also have to pass in the user like this. And this is similar to what we would do for like the delete link. And so when we get to the controller, this is where things get a little bit hairy because you don't want to have to create several different controllers for each one of the models that you're using in this single table inheritance. Instead, it would be really nice if we could just use one controller to be able to handle a indefinite number of the single table inheritance for the contacts controller. So here you'll see that we have commented out where we do need to create a new contact whenever we call the new action and same for the create. And then when we do our before action set contact, we also need to look up that contact. But you see, we get into our issue where we don't know if we need to call emergencies or friends. Now the params type that gets passed in will have that information. However, it would be really ugly if we just did a case or if block within each one of these actions. So you could do something like at contact equal at user dot send and then pass in the params type and then call dot new. However, this creates a security issue within your application because you will get a dangerous send and someone can pass something else in here and just create much havoc within your application. So definitely don't do that. So in a case like this, where I do need to select one of these and it's statically known within the application. So we know it's going to be a emergency or it's going to be a friend, but we don't know exactly which one in this case we can create another private method. And this private method, I'm just going to call set type to where we do a case logic on our type. And then when it's a friend, we return friend. When it's an emergency, we return emergency. So instead of sending the friends type like we were doing here, we can do a send then the set type. And then we would need to call pluralize on this because of the associations, emergencies and friends. So we can go ahead and put this down here under our create. And then for the other actions, we could do something very similar. And this way you're not opening up your application to a dangerous send because this set type will only ever return friend or emergency. So then when we get to our create and update actions, we need to be able to send the contact params and the contact params is just the private method for our strong parameters. So if you had created the controller from the scaffold generator, then it would have created something like this where you have params require contact. And instead of require contact, our attributes are going to be passed in through the friend or emergency. So we can call set type and then just convert that to a symbol and this would work just the same. So now we can try to create a friend's contact. And if we try to create this without the birthday, you'll see that we get the validation that the birthday cannot be blank. And so it works. So now we have our single table inheritance on the contacts where one could be an emergency or one could be a friend. And then we just have the validations where each one acts differently from one another. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.